what's up guys so i've made three attempts at doing a cyberpunk inform settings information video like I don't, I don't really want to do an optimization guide because i think it it's so different per user i i can tell you vaguely like which settings have the biggest impact between like medium or or high but it is pretty self-explanatory like for most settings that do impact performance it is between medium to high and ultra so there'll be like a bigger jump, but low to medium is usually smaller and high to ultra is usually smaller. So usually it's like, and by smaller, I mean like a few FPS while the jump from like medium to high is five FPS plus. But I can't say exactly how much because it is different for every user. Um, I've actually made three attempts at a settings settings guide and I've been sabotaged by my family three times, like my kids and they just want to come in and I can't say no. So. Uh, this is the final attempt, and I'm just going to cut straight to the chase with a few particular settings I want to touch on that I think there's users wondering what these settings do, or they've looked at optimization guides and realized that the guides didn't cover those settings. And for me, personally, it's kind of frustrating because I was trying to optimize my own settings, and I noticed none of the optimization guides really went into depth with some of these settings. So I'm going to try to just hit on the important points. I'm not going to cover settings that all the review sites have gotten right, so contact shadows, uh, subsurface scattering, and facial facial detail, those are all settings that are really self-explanatory. I will say that these settings here uh, do make a huge difference for cutscenes with minimal performance impact. So I would definitely keep them turned on if you care about immersion and good looking cutscenes. Okay, so contact shadows and facial geometry. Um, contact shadows will produce good lighting around the nose uh, the neck and the armpits when you see like a cutscene with with any character, uh, but it seems to more relate to the cutscenes rather than anything you can pick up on in game. So I've like tried following NPCs around and toggling these settings. I couldn't find a huge difference. Uh, it was only with main characters that you can really see it. But I would recommend keeping these turned off no matter what your other settings are. Uh, so sacrifice performance for these if you have to. Now, I have tested quite thoroughly all of the settings. Uh, but I can't fit it all in a, video, one, a single video in one take because, like I said, my kids will come in the room and it'll get hard. Like, I'll have to just cut and edit too much. So to try to get it all in one go, um, the important parts, LOD, level of detail. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering what it does. I spent ages scouring buildings and turn it, toggling it on and off. I could not spot the difference, right? But there is a difference. Um, and you might think, well, what is it? Well... When I tested here, you can see that there's actually some nice things you pick up on while looking for what the setting does. And that is that all the lights in the buildings do turn on and off. And no, that's not level of detail. They It happens between low and high. Uh, distant lights will still turn on and off at low and high. There's It's, it's nothing to do with that. Um, I literally just like spent ages staring at, at these scenes trying to pick up. Is it a, is it a character model level of detail? What is it? Uh, I've stared at garbage. It's not garbage. It's cars. And if they had labeled it car level of detail, everyone would have found out what it does straight away. Uh, it may do other things, but cars is the one I found. Uh, and I, I haven't explored enough. Now that I know how the setting works, I think I could find other objects that are affected by level of detail. But more importantly, it's cars. And I, you know, like, there you go. If you've been wondering what it does, this is what it does. Um, this is the maximum distance before you lose detail on low. So you can see here the bolts for these knobby things and the gas can have this detail here. Uh, when you step back past that, you lose the bolts. The gas can retains detail. And then the low max range is where everything loses detail. So the gas can no longer has these the depth to it and the bolts are gone. And depending on the car, it changes. So it's not like the motor of all cars. It's certain parts of certain cars. So I'll just show you how the setting works first, the distances, but the difference between the settings. So if I go over here, like I do have like bigger pictures that I've uploaded to Facebook. I'll share the album somewhere um, and I might find a more high, high quality site to upload all this stuff. So here you can see, I'll turn my camera off. This is the low setting uh, and there's stages. So when you get to a certain distance, the bolts will disappear. And then when you get further away, uh, the bolt areas will lose even more detail, and then the gas can loses further detail too. So 
it kind of works that way with other cards too, but it's 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 a bit buggy. Uh, there's a, a few discrepancies I found that didn't make sense, and I'll share you, share that now. So as you can see, though, the distance gets pretty good on medium, and on high, it looks about the same. This is the maximum distance before some quality of the bolts were lost. So for these bolts in particular, which I can zoom in on with the other testing, you can see the bolts are still there at this distance, just hard to notice. And same on medium. The medium max range for the bolts is about, it's almost indistinguishable. Uh, I'm on the wrong picture now. Sorry. Uh, almost indistinguishable from medium and high, right? And here's the distance where the bolts fade out and the gas can's almost losing detail. And then once I've passed that range, you can see it looks roughly the same. There might be a small difference between medium and high, but it's not a big deal with this particular car. But there is a big deal in another car, which is this one. Now with this car, it has interesting detail. This is the max range at low settings for the front fender bumper and this exhaust vent and the trimmings on the window and some of the interior trimmings also change when you go a bit too far away. And as you can see here, this vent has disappeared and this has turned into like a flat surface. So that's the difference. It is, it is hard to spot, but once you know it, it's easier to notice. Like once you realize what it does, you'll pick up on it more. So as you can see here, um, the max range before this detail was lost on low was this was the max range and then stepping back like literally two or three steps uh, Lost all that detail the, the vent was completely gone uh, But pay attention here. This is a bit weird. See this side door The door is white and this is a close detail like it should It should look white until I pass a certain point and then lose more detail, right? And this was the maximum range. But once I went further back, the door gained a texture. It gained detail from a further distance. So it's like LOD, uh, level of detail controls detail, and it's supposed to get worse on lower settings. And as you go further away, you should lose detail. That's how I think it should work. And it gained detail at this distance. So I'm close closer to the car than the other settings are would take and I've already gained I've gained a texture at this distance and now going to medium you actually lose the texture because the level of detail is supposed to be better so I can still see the grill at this distance on medium while on low you've lost the grill you're losing detail but then this weird uh, door design well this nice looking door design texture is added so I think it's a bit buggy uh, they haven't it's a bug that they haven't it's like reversed. If there's a setting that's meant to make this thing fade out, uh, it's all the way around. So this this thing should be here at this, like zoomed in. When I go closer, that texture should be visible and it should be fading out as I get to this distance. Not fading in, but it fades in uh, the further away I got, the low. And then at medium, you can see how far back I had to go to get the far texture to appear. So this already goes matte, like when you get to a certain distance, but you can see the grill further away. So I know medium was working, uh, I could see this grill and I could see the vent and then it, I had to go this far back to get the grill to to go matte like to go to go to a flat surface and to get this far texture so yeah I think it's a little bit buggy but it's weird um, at the very least because when I go closer I lose that detail and then on high same thing same same text like there's nothing different it, there wasn't anything extra on high it's just I had to go even further back to gain this door texture and before the grill and stuff disappeared. So I think when they do fully fix it, if it's functioning as intended, LOD high would be the best setting. And there was like virtually no FPS difference apart from cars backing up in the highway that did cause me to increase VRAM usage. So if you were looking at VRAM usage, uh, it's really hard to test. Yeah, I was always between 6,000 MB to 6,200. And there's another setting that affects VRAM usage for slow hard drives, but it can actually decrease pop-in and improve frame rates. So that's with the slow hard drive mode under the gameplay settings. So yeah, that could be why my VRAM usage is also higher than some people running 8 gigabyte cards. 
because I'm running slow HDD mode to prevent pop-in. But the thing is, slow HDD mode also increases load times when you're fast traveling because it loads it has to load more in for that area. So it's it's a trade-off. If you don't lo fast travel that much and you don't load checkpoints that much, like you're not dying often, you're better off keeping it off uh, to prevent pop-in and you know have more stuff load. But if you're constantly loading things and reloading checkpoints, like you're playing the story and you stuff something up, you reload a checkpoint all the time, then you're better off keeping it on fast HDD mode as long as you have an SSD or something fast. Because um, it, it, it is also intended for slow hard drives because you don't want them load streaming stuff in while you're playing um, because it'll, it'll stutter. So yeah, but anyway, this is what the distances, the max range before the textures will fade out on low, medium, and high. So you can see there's a much bigger difference with high here from this angle. And then past that range, yeah, the texture will pop in and it'll, it's doing the opposite of what it should do. But yeah, just wanted to share that. Now you know what it does. Uh, it's nothing to do with buildings. It's nothing to do with roads. It's nothing to do with garbage on the ground. Uh, or the guy's reflective uh, leather piece there. It was nothing that I could I could notice until I was checking out this car uh, that I randomly found. Not this one. Um, the the Dodge looking car, and yeah, or oh, the Mustang looking car. And when I was finally checking that out, I was like, Hey, wait a second, because I was just like gonna take a screenshot of it, and I had my LOD on. I think I had it on high, but I ran up the road because I was just, I don't know what I was doing. I was looking at the water. And then I turned back and I noticed it all fade in as I got closer. And then I took a closer look at the vent and I realized that's what LED was doing. So, yeah, you can see here the vent goes completely away on low at this distance and the front. So, I don't know, like, uh, I tested on this car and it didn't do it. Like, nothing, all of this detail remained even further back. You can actually see it in my other other images the further away I got it didn't really lose detail at all there might be something on that car but even this little like tiny car behind it the smart car the front of that car did not lose any detail at certain distances it was only the motor that lost detail it was a bit weird because it was the the motor was the detailed part of that car I guess where they focused on but it's such an obscure setting and many many uh, optimization sites don't really seem to know what it does. Uh, but the performance impact is like minimal or hard to hard to measure. But at the very least, when you know what it does, it's like a peace of mind. Like, oh, I'm not really losing that much by having on medium. Uh, if you've got a really low end system that is having performance issues, I would lower it because it might help, uh, especially when there's lots of cars on the screen. And, you know, if you're like running low VRAM and stuff like that, then I think low or medium would be the options to go with. But just for the sake of knowing what it does, that's what it does. It's car details. And they should have just labeled it car details, car detail, whatever. Uh, they should have labeled it. They should have put car in the label because everyone would have found out what it does straight away. Uh, let's see. There's another one, dynamic decals. And the actual in-game description, because normally decals, like dynamic decals in most games, uh, first-person shooter games, are to do with bullet holes. But in... Cyberpunk, it says simultaneously illuminated dynamic decals. And I was trying to wonder what that means. Uh, like, I wasn't 100% sure. Does it mean the way the bullet holes are lit up by artificial lighting? Uh, is it something to do with that? And I had, like, a machine gun, and I filled the wall with bullet holes, and they all faded out roughly the same speed. Like, and I was able to cover, like, empty my gun. Uh, and it just, they started fading out once I reached a certain point of time, not specifically a certain amount of bullet holes. So... The bullet hole, the amount of decal, bullet hole decals that can go onto a wall, even at the low setting, is huge. Uh, I could fill a whole wall, like I said. Um, <clears throat> but then there was something else I realized is when I switched weapons, I had a gun that produced these kind kinds of bullet holes, illuminated with light beams coming out of them. And that's where I think the max dynamic illuminated decals might come into play. But my gun was only a burst fire pistol, and I couldn't fill the wall with bullet holes. So it was only like five bursts before, and they fade out super fast between all the settings. So on low, they fade out fast. On ultra, they fade out just as fast. So before I could get to the sixth burst, which is roughly here, 
you can see I did it a bit better on the low one, um, it would already be fading away. So I couldn't measure it properly. I need, I need like a, a, a special machine gun or assault rifle that makes the same type of bullet holes. And I think that's where, or if there's lots of uh, enemies that using th this type of gun and they're flying around all over the place, I think that's where it might start to affect your performance. So personally, I would just leave it on low, not ultra. Even though there's no measurable impact, you won't get less decals overall running on low. You can still have tons of bullet decals. And unless you're walking around battlefields looking for them, uh, it's not going to matter that much anyway. Unless you, you know, when you when the enemy shoot you and they miss, do you go back and check where where the bullets hit? Like they'll fade out by the time you finish looting and go to look for them. So yeah, uh, low would be the performance option. Uh, you could run medium or high. I didn't notice a performance difference, but in big firefights, it might matter because it it sounds like it's more specifically related to illuminated decals and dynamic ones. So dynamic means they can appear and disappear. You know, they, they're interacting with the world. So these dynamic bullet holes here with illuminated uh, might be it. So I couldn't test comprehensively though, because I don't know what guns do what. I haven't done like a gun guide yet. I've only tested high powered rifles and some of the uh, automatic weapons. And automatic weapons, personally, I think they suck. Um, they're fun to use because it's kind of like satisfying to have it like, you know, hitting hitting an enemy at close range with a fully automatic weapon is awesome. But in terms of firepower, like stopping power, uh, they're so weak. You have to like empty whole clips in enemies to take them down. Anyway, so level of detail, dynamic. Uh, the other one I wanted to go over, I can show you anyway, just for the sake of it, seeing as this video time is a lot better than my first attempts. Uh, ambient occlusion. The FPS difference, I had to edit this because it was 68 with occlusion off. Now, this is a difference that's hard to notice on a zoomed out image, and that's what a lot of the websites will show you, uh, is that going from low to medium uh, doesn't seem like it does anything, and it's mainly off. You see these lines here on the, on the bridge? With low, it fills in small gaps with shadows, and that adds a lot of depth and makes them look more 3D. So you can see here, it, there's like barely any difference between low, medium, and high. But the difference is in the geometry, like the shadow geometry of far of of distant objects. So like um, if there's chimneys on a building with uh, brackets around them and stuff like that, it'll it'll add depth to those. But it, it is very hard to notice. And if you look at the FPS, 68, 66, so we lose two FPS. Um, another 2 FPS to go to 64, and then the big jump going to high is 4 FPS. And I let it stabilize. You can see the time. Like, I let it, uh, it was a spike when I went to the menu, and then it stabilized at a higher frame rate. I don't know why it loops higher like that. Um, the other way, higher frame latency because the FPS went down. Sorry. So you can see it's higher on each one. Um, but yeah, so going from even off to medium is 4 FPS, which is bigger than it looks. And a lot of sites will also say, uh, just set it to at least medium because it adds a bit more depth. For me, it's so unnoticeable. And you can see it on a zoomed in image, as I'll show you here. So this is off. OK, pay attention here, the thing. But look, you can spot the difference now when I switch it to low. All those buildings here, here, and here gain shadows. So that is pretty big for. But that's to low, okay? That's the biggest difference, and that's what a lot of sites, so I say low or medium, um, a lot will actually recommend medium, but low is the big one that I would say is a minimum setting and optimal setting, and then if you go low to medium, the shadows get slightly more detail, and see here where the there's like pipes with the bracket um, protection, I don't know what that is, support around them, it fills in a bit more underneath. But you're not going to notice that, honestly. You'd, you'd, you'd have to be really zooming in everywhere to notice that kind of detail. Um, for the most part, you're not going to notice low to medium in general gameplay. So it's like save your two FPS, you know? Um, and then high is just like tanking your FPS for also for minimum, minimal gains. It's filling out the shadow under here a little bit. And I did test other stuff. Uh, even here, you can't see the difference between off and low or medium that easily uh, because it's it's such a subtle effect. But in practice, off to low is very noticeable. So 
if I go here in, in, in zoom, like in full screen, this is off. And look at the garbage bags, how the light's hitting them. There's like no shadowing anywhere. It's really like bad. It's basically texture shadowing only. And then going to all, uh, to low, you can see that it fills in a lot. And it doesn't just fill in around the bags. It fills in around the windows here, around the pipe, around the edge a little bit of the building. You can see that difference. And even here where the, where the gate is on the ground, it's not a shadow from all the shadow settings. It's occlusion that adds in that detail, that shadow detail. And finally, going to medium fills out the, the shadow behind the pipe a bit more, but it is subtle. Like, you'd have to be looking at the pipe and really care about how, how that pipe is shadowed. But for me, it, it's not it's not worth losing more FPS. Um, and then on high, you get a, like a little bit more shadowing here, on the, this thing, barrier. But again, not that noticeable. And now here's another scene. It also is interesting because zoomed out, I find it hard to tell the difference. But you know, you already know where to look. Like you know, it's the bags, right? These bags still look so similar when zoomed out. So if you're playing on like a smaller monitor or a 1080p monitor, like a 19-inch monitor or something, not a 34-inch, not not a huge screen, you might not notice and and the occlusion off that easily. It's really just that that line above the garbage that you really notice. And maybe along here, the depth that's added to the to the image, but then medium is like unnoticeable between low. But when I zoom in now, you now you'll see it. It's huge. It's like a massive difference, but it's just weird. I find it not so massive. Uh, you can see the shadowing under the bags here if, if I tell you specifically where to look. But the first thing that catches your eye is the white details above the bags. You don't necessarily look under. You look at the top. And that's where you're trying to like spot the difference, but it's so subtle. But zoomed in, you can see that it is adding shadowing to the top areas of the bags. It's just done in specific spots. But yeah, I just found it weird because when I actually zoomed the pictures out, I was having trouble like, did I put the right picture in? Um, and yeah, you can see there. And then going to medium, it just adds a little bit more detail to the cardboard and here. But I found that random pieces of cardboard having shadows under them actually can make a scene look worse. Because when I put it into practice and I ran medium for a bit, I was seeing bits of cardboard with shadowing that in that lighting condition shouldn't have had shadowing. It just was adding it to nearly all the pieces of cardboard. And if you turn it off higher, it even makes it deeper. But under certain lighting conditions, it can look bad. It can look out of place. Uh, so I chose to just stick with low. But you can see there is more detail, at least you know what it does. Uh, and for those that aren't familiar with the occlusion setting, like I already know what it does from other titles, but not everyone does. Um, some people are new to gaming or they, you know, Cyberpunk might be the first really visually impressive game that they're playing. And that's that's how the setting works. And I don't want to spend forever doing this video because, you know, my kids will interrupt eventually and I'll have to just cut it short. If, if I do cut this short, I'm just going to upload it anyway. So just so you know, Thanks for watching, guys. If you already got what you wanted out of it, you can keep watching. I'll go over the other settings, but there is a chance I'll have to cut it short and I'll just upload a part two. Okay, so just so you know, be, be ready for this video to just randomly end if you're not looking at the timer. Now, screen space reflections. I actually made a dedicated video for this setting, but I had a few disgruntled people that are like annoyed that I didn't go into enough detail of what type of reflections, uh, of how the screen space reflections are in fact removed on the offsetting. But my main point of that video was to point out that you still have a lot of reflections in detail with SSR off compared to other titles where you turn SSR off and it disables all secondary reflections, which does happen in Control, which is one of the biggest recent titles to do with reflections out of all games in history, pretty much. So if Control does it, um, that's a, a pretty big point to make. Um, control has secondary reflection setting that only works when SSR is enabled. And if you disable SSR, as I'll show you, um, if you disable SSR here but leave your global reflections on high, you still lose all your reflections. You, the floor is no longer reflective. You're getting no light. You, there's no cube mapping. Everything turns off. And that's what I thought Cyberpunk would do, so I never went to SSR off. I thought it'll do this. 
it'll make it all matte and I'll get no reflective lights. I'll get no shadowing. I'll get no cube maps. Uh, all the metallic surfaces will turn matte. Uh, that's what I thought would happen. But that's not how it works in Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk does it differently. And it also happens in Doom 2016. They don't label it as SSR, but the reflection setting goes from ultra down to off. And from max down to medium in Doom 2016, you get screen space reflections. And then at low, it, it falls back to, to cube, some type of cube map reflections. I'm not sure if that's the exact type that they're using. And then on off, it completely turns it off. But the main point is they don't even bother labeling which ones are screen space and which ones are which. So in Cyberpunk, they don't give you an option for cube maps or secondary reflections. You've only got SSR. And if you're like me and you theorize that or you, you assume that SSR will disable all reflections in the game and all light reflections and all shadow reflections, you're wrong uh, because you still you still have these types of reflections here that I'm massing around. You still keep these in Cyberpunk if it's a reflective surface. Okay, the only reflections that are super affected is uh, SSR adds detailed uh, real-time reflections to surfaces, but the cube maps don't fade out. Like, it doesn't replace them with SSR. The, the, the cube map or the building reflections, the shadow reflections, it looks, see how this pole is like a shadow and this, this uh, pillar here is casting a shadow reflection in the ground? Those types of reflections are not transitioned out or backup reflections in Cyberpunk. They're actually part of the base reflections of the game that SSR does not affect. So if you turn SSR all the way up, these kinds of reflections that look a bit blocky but do still look nice in movement are still retained. And if you turn SSR all the way off, uh, you lose the screen space reflections, but many of the reflections that, that require SSR in other games uh, are retained. So that's the point I'm trying to get across. So this is a uh, SSR medium with global reflections high. And you can see the detail here in the floor, the lighting, the pillar, this concrete pillar that, and some of the detail here, the bit of the lighting here reflected in the floor, that's global reflections, not SSR. Okay. And you can see SSR medium, global medium. And then when I turn global off, you lose all of that lighting shadow reflection. The pillar no longer has a dark shadow. It's all gone. Uh, and that's from global or secondary reflections, as some uh, some users like to call them. Now, if I turn global high with SSR off, it doesn't do anything. And the fact that SSR is off also makes some of the object materials matte, like it turns to a matte color. And see, it's just black. In Cyberpunk, if you turn SSR off, that doesn't happen with all materials. Uh, you can still have bars that look reflective. You can have a railing that has like it's like got a green paint on it but it's still slightly reflective and it's still got cube maps and ssr off in this even with global reflections high in control just disables all of it so you so yeah so this is the difference here ssr off in in cyberpunk still got reflections on the roof of the car there's still reflections on the side if you angle the camera right there's still reflections on the front uh building reflections especially at daytime i should have actually taken this shot at daytime and you still get lighting on the ground as well that will disappear at daytime. So you can see that there's still a lot of detail to do with the reflections. They're just not as detailed as screen space can be. But yeah, that's the point I was trying to get across. I just didn't want to specifically go too far into it. I guess in this video, it doesn't matter because I'm pointing out um, things that users may not notice or may not expect uh, that work differently. And you can even see over there on the ground, there's still some kind of lighting reflection in the concrete uh, on the sidewalk, while in a game like Cyberpunk, if you uh, in like Control, sorry, if you disable um, SSR, you don't get any re surface reflections. Even glass loses reflections, so it is very different to how Cyberpunk operates. And yeah, so I'll also show a few scenes that actually look pretty good with SSR off, and SSR does not actually enhance them that much. So this is SSR off, and you get a massive FPS hit from turning it to ultra the ground becomes more reflective with SSR Ultra, but it's not raining. Uh, and over here becomes more reflective on the tiles, but the problem with that is it adds noise. And you can't really see the noise in the screenshot, but it's like a pixelation that looks like rain hitting the ground, except it's not raining. And it does it everywhere, uh, even at Ultra. So 
that's another issue with SSR that I have, and they need to kind of like patch it or fix some of the way SSR works, I think. Um, like even here in this thing under the bridge, it was not raining. When I looked up, I could see stars. It looks cloudy at this angle, but looking up, I could honestly see stars and there is no rain falling on this picture. I've got other pictures of the rain falling. You can tell the difference. And I even tried advancing time by an hour to make sure it wasn't about to rain. But basically, SSR off, no rain. The concrete looks dry. It is a concrete road. It's not asphalt. That's how it should look from here, exposed to the sky, to here under the bridge. And then with SSR Ultra, everything gets wet and it's not raining. So this is like, if, if people are worried about how accurate reflections are, why are, why are roads getting wet from turning SSR up? It shouldn't happen. Um, and you can see under the bridge, it's still dry. So it's simulating a wet road when there's no rain. And so that's like, on one hand, you lose rain reflections, which is a big deal because they do look really realistic for, for that specific type of weather. But unless it's raining constantly, you're also paying a heavy FPS hit uh, for sometimes unrealistic scenes. And here's SSR off, you still get the ground reflection. So that's a reflective material of this type. It's not, it doesn't like make all surfaces flat uh, or non-reflective. So you can still see there's a lighting reflection in the floor. While with SSR Ultra, it doesn't really change the lighting reflection, but it adds some lighting. It makes the light appear a lot stronger so that the seats are lit up really well and the bin is lit up better. But in terms of immersion realism, uh, off doesn't look unrealistic. It's just like the, the light could be a bit weaker, so it's not reflecting as strongly on the chairs. While here, the chairs, are, the, the light's like super strong. That's the impression I get looking at it, is like the light got way stronger. I mean, off and off. And off. But the image itself, like the flooring, which is the, the most eye-catching part, is the same. You don't lose it. Uh, there's a bit of extra reflection here and along the you know ground here, but it's subtle, even at ultra. But you can see that here's a diff the, the, the difference a lot of people will notice, 60 FPS, 47 FPS. So if you are getting low frame rates, you won't lose all your detail by going to off, just so you're aware. And uh, this was one more scene where, wait, I'll go to the rain scene first so you can see that, because I don't want to say that SSR sucks, it's just the performance hit sucks. And it doesn't always work as you think it should. So here's what I want to show you as well. This is Psycho. You can see the, the FPS hit to Psycho is massive. Uh, it does look really good, and it is accurate to what real-life reflection, reflection should look like in the rain. And you can see the rain, so obviously it's raining. Um, it does add a grain, though. So you can't see it in these pictures. i got to do the, I got to show you the full screen ones, but it adds like this grain that is really unbearable for some people. And it's worse in dry conditions at daytime than driving around. You'll see it, especially where the sun's hitting a surface. Like if you're near, near a uh, sunrise or something and it's hitting like a certain part of the road, you'll just get tons of grain and it looks even up to high and ultra. You can still notice it. psycho is better because it, it makes it finer, but it's still there. It's like a sparkling effect. It looks like rain hitting the ground, but it's not rain. Um, and you can see with off, you lose all that reflection. So that realistic reflection, even at low, it looks good in, the, in a steel shot, but the grain ruins it for me, uh, which is why, unless it was raining every day in, in Cyberpunk, I just would rather have it off and gain tons of FPS. But I'll show you what I mean now. So Psycho, you can actually see the grain. That's what the grain looks like. It's always moving. That's the grain reflect screen space effect. Okay, but it does add realistic reflection. I'm not going to like argue with that in the puddles. It, it adds definitely realistic lighting reflections. And you can see here in this shot of uh, Shibuya, I think it's in Japan. Uh, this is a wet road with puddles and you can see that's how it reflects. It actually does look accurate. It looks pretty cool. But when it's not raining, there's no lighting reflection reflecting on the ground. There's lighting that hits the ground, but it doesn't reflect because it's not a reflective surface without rain and water. So that's just so you know, if you're wondering about accuracy, like if you're OCD about it, it can look good and off definitely looks bad. Only in this specific scenario, though, I'm not going to like say I'm not going to turn around and say that it's uh, screen space looks better everywhere because it doesn't. Uh, there's scenes where it doesn't even make a difference. So anyway, we'll go th through this. The FPS hit is the biggest difference for me because the grain is unrealistic. Do you, uh, you don't see any grain in this picture. 
there's fuzziness where the light's reflecting, but it's not like on all surfaces of the road, twinkling and moving, um, especially if it was dry, where it wouldn't reflect at all. Um, because the, the grain will actually reflect on dry conditions, which makes it weird, like it shouldn't even appear. So I've established that off does look bad in rain, so I'm not denying that. But now I'm going to show you something else that's interesting. Where, where am I? On this bridge. Okay, so this is Psycho. This is the Psycho SSR setting in a rainy condition. And I don't know why. It's the same time of the day. This is Ultra. Okay, so it does look pretty good. You can see like a light reflection here, right? How come, I don't understand this, like, because I, I checked, I took a screenshot twice of the low setting just to make sure that the time of the day changing by a few minutes wasn't affecting it. I took this screenshot first. This is off, and it looks better to me. The road color looks better, everything looks better. Same time of day, like, within a minute of the other pictures, 527, 529. So I'm, I'm paying 30 FPS for this fuzzy haze look of like orange haze, I don't know, but it looks worse to me and the reflection locations change, but that's not a big deal because this street sign is roughly here, you know, it's roughly in line, it's not a big deal, but the thing that bugs me is how much the coloration changed from having it on Psycho, and I'm losing 30 FPS for it, the road looks less like a road, it looks like the sun is like piercing through a, a rusty cloud, I don't know, but the thing that jars me a lot is that I went through and you can see the times I took these all around the same time and then I went and took another shot after taking these shots to make sure it wasn't the time suddenly changing the lighting and even on the second shot it still looks better to me it looks way better that road looks awesome it's like the texture is better but it's screen space that is affecting it screen space is doing this so unless screen space is changing textures which it should not be doing because that would be cheating uh, that would be like artificially making reflections look good by changing textures, which is basically using like pre-baked texture qualities. I, I don't know, like it shouldn't affect it. Uh, screen space should just add in screen space reflections, but yeah, off looks way better. I can show a zoomed out one with all, the, all of them. Look at the color on off, how much better that looks. So I know some people, they might like Psycho Ultra in that paying 30 FPS or even 10 FPS, but for me, uh, combined with the grain, the fact that this scene to me looks much better and clearer is enough for me to go, well, if I'm gaining 30 FPS and it looks better sometimes, then the trade-off that in rainy situations, the puddles won't be as reflective and won't look as good and the, the, the ground will actually still look matte is not that big a deal. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that. And again, this is the graininess I was trying to show you. You can see it on the bonnet of the car. The bonnet of the car looks dotted instead of carbon fiber, which is what it was. It's striped carbon fiber uh, with a gloss coat. And just like the door, the bonnet is basically meant to be the same as the door, but because of screen space reflections, it gets all pixelated, like dotty looking. Um, but it is hard to see in this picture. 30 FPS, ultra 49 FPS. You can see it much more in, in ultra. And Ultra is like basically the playable setting if you're, if you're going to run screen space at all. Ultra is the one you could actually have performance left over to run. And look at the bottom of that car. It's dotted like sand. Okay. And pay attention though. See the top how there's shadowing reflection from buildings or whatnot on the top of the car? Now we're going to go down to high and see the grain getting worse. Medium. Uh, it's even getting worse on the roof. And it's also all over the road. It, it, it's a lot worse in movement. I'm sure you, most of you have already seen this. Low is horrible. And now off. It's smooth. The front's smooth. There's no dots on it anymore. And all the grain is basically gone in, in action when you're driving. It's gone. But what other part of the scene with screen space up looks better? None of it. And that primarily, a lot of the driving you're going to do, especially if you fast forward time, is daytime driving. So when you're driving a car, the main thing you're going to notice is the reflection on the roof, the bonnet, and any grain. You're going to notice grain on the road. Uh, maybe it's even worse at low resolutions. But for me, 
between like Ultra and or even Psycho and off, this reflection on the roof and on the bonnet are the main ones that pop out to me. And otherwise there's, as you can see here, there's not like a large discernible difference apart from the reflections on the car. And if there's grain on all of these and there's no grain on this one, I'm going to pick the no grain one. So as you can see, close up shots, the bonnet is where you can notice it the most in a still shot. And Psycho is like the only passable one that I would consider, but yeah, it takes up way too much performance. And you can just see it's really bad at high, medium and low. And even Ultra has it. But on look on off, it's actually more comparable to Psycho in terms of the roof reflection. The roof reflection is a slightly different color because it's not screen spaced, but it still looks passable. Like you're unless you're literally looking for the source uh, reflection, the source of it, which you're not gonna find in off because it's like a pre-baked cube map type thing, um, it still looks fine. And here's another part. I was just trying to compare. The road looks drier, but it's not raining at all anyway. So you could just pretend that the rain's dried up and there's still wet parts of the road on off. But mainly to point out how the screen space works in the roof of the car, you can see the signs and stuff better. It's more realistic. And on off, they disappear. You just get lighting. But at the same time, depending on the finish and the clear coat on the car, if you want to get real technical, um, off could still be considered realistic because not all surfaces will reflect that mirror finish. So if you just pretend that your car's got more of a matte finish, that's passive uh, for realism. And the road still has a bit of lighting, like a nice lighting effect on it. Uh, yeah, it's just not a massive difference compared to the full-on raining uh, screenshot. But you get rid of a lot of the grain that happens at daytime. So you can see them all zoomed out here. And I will upload these. But it's just so you can see for yourselves what you're losing or what you're gaining uh, from turning these settings off. And the main thing is you gain a ton of FPS. You lose grain and you still get some lighting shadowy reflections on the roof, uh, even if they're not screen spaced. So it doesn't disable all reflections. And I'm just going to keep repeating that because I want to get it through to people that you don't lose all the nice effects on certain textures. It's just rain dynamic water from rain where you lose the most uh, because yeah the water on the ground won't reflect anything when it's in movement and it seems like when it rains the whole road becomes wet with the reflective surface and you don't get that with screen space often. but for a lot of reflections it's like roof of the car um, cube maps if you want to call them that uh, i don't know exactly what they're using what algorithm what technique they're using for these type of roof reflections but you can actually find a lot of the cube maps even with ssr turned off you can still angle the car and just go, oh, there's a cube map reflection. It looks blocky. It looks like a dark shadow. But when you're in movement, it just moves over the car and looks cool. It looks like a building. You just went under the shadow of a building. It's like a shadow type of reflection. And those are still active when screen space is on. So I, I did elaborate on that way too much. <laughs> um, but my kids are being good at the moment. So yeah, I will upload all these. You can go through them if you want. And you can kind of get where I'm coming from, where this is the biggest trade-off, is losing uh, reflections in this scene, in scenes like this. But at the same time, it's not raining that often, and you still have some reflection. Uh, it's just not super strong. But it doesn't break immersion the way I thought it would, because I originally stuck with low and medium, because I don't have the performance to run Psycho or Ultra, and I noticed the grain, and, I'm, and I was hesitating turning it to off, because I thought it would ruin all scenes in the game and then I found all these scenes where it looks like almost indistinguishable and sometimes where it looks unrealistic because it's not raining and concrete does not reflect like in the Shibuya picture it, it does not reflect when it's dry so Ultra was making stuff reflective that it shouldn't have been I mean it is a small sacrifice if you really care about how well these chairs are lit up but look at the FPS. That's all you need to know if you care about performance and want a smooth running game. You gain a ton of FPS and you don't lose it all. So off Psycho, 30 FPS, half your FPS gone, just so the reflections can move around and the coloring can 
which ruins the picture for me. But yeah, that's that screen space. Um, hopefully that gives you a good idea, but you can test for yourself if you notice green, turn it off. Uh, and then we can go into volumetric. The main thing with volumetric, because I'm sure most guides have already covered this pretty well, there's virtually no difference between all the settings. Uh, apart from FPS, if it's really fog heavy, because this is fog resolution, right? Uh, going close up, it looks about the same. It, uh, the building that I was taking these screenshots had different, like it was waves of fog coming out, waves of smoke. And it, it turned out that there were points in all of them where they looked really, really similar. And I couldn't see anything that would make me want to run ultra instead of low uh, performance wise. Because you can see here in a close up, the FPS ultra definitely tanked compared to low. But visually, all roughly the same. Uh, even on medium, it would get thick like high. It just depends on where the animation was because this high cloud dispersed, uh, and I didn't get the screenshot, but it dispersed and looked like this low picture. It like went out, spread out uh, as it was coming out of the building. So that's not a big deal, but the big deal is actually in the way they've implemented volumetric fog around street lights. And this is to do with the game design. It's to do with what the developers have chosen to implement it. Maybe they want to try to make their game look as realistic as possible, but if they had more time to properly optimize, the low, uh, medium and low options should disable streetlight fog because it would look so much better. Because what happens is when you've got fog on lower medium, the blockiness of the, of the fog combined with light, of the volumetric effect combined with light, shows the low resolution of the fog and it looks blocky and it flickers. So when you're driving around, you'll, you'll notice all the streetlights flickering and looking all blocky. It's caused by fog uh, resolution being too low. But you've got to take a performance hit, turning it up to higher ultra. Uh, you can't see it in the screenshot, but there is a performance hit, as I've shown on the other pictures, when there's actual fog on the screen, like big sources of fog. Uh, there can be a massive hit of like 6 FPS, 7 FPS from going to low or, or even just low to high is a noticeable hit. So yeah, you can see that there, but basically low and medium cause blocky volumetric fog around street lights that is very noticeable and flickering. And you can see it here above the street lights instead of just below it. That's the main issue. They might be able to optimize or, you know, make it work better so that it does not do that. But the easy option would be to just adjust the setting to disable all streetlight fog on medium or low. So if it turned it off, you just have like an LED bar, kind of like this strip of light here, this LED strip here, or the sign over here. Those don't have any fog issues. They produce a nice glow. And if they made the streetlights work like this sign or that strip, it would look fine to me, uh, rather than having the flickering annoying stuff because the only way to get rid of the flicker is turning it up really high. But even then, it still doesn't completely solve it because you can see the distant streetlight still has it a little bit. And even on ultra, the distant light still has a bit of blockiness. But it does stop it appearing above the close lights on higher ultra. So zoomed out, you can see it low. It's, it's blocky around the whole thing. Same on medium. And on high and ultra, it does not creep above the light until it, unless you're looking at a really far away one. But I wanted to point that out too, because if you're wondering what's causing it, it's fog resolution and they need to patch it and optimize it or fix it somehow or improve the resolution. I don't know what they what they could do. Um, personally, I just think they should disable it so there's no volumetric fog around streetlights on medium and low. Because on high, it looks passable and on ultra, it's fine. But personally, I don't care much for the effect and I find on the lights of the game look much better without the fog. So it's kind of annoying. Like it should be called. There should be a setting called streetlight fog or something. Like yeah, I don't care if there's a hundred settings. Like I would be happy to tweak them all. Um, but there should be a way to disable streetlight fog. Maybe there's a config edit that, that, that someone will find, and then we can just disable this annoying volumetric fog around streetlights, and just be done with it. Like if there was an off option and it turned off all of this fog, I would still be happy with that because I, I I don't even find this fog that immersive. Like it doesn't phase me that much. Uh, even when it's coming out of sewers. Like, I don't understand why all the sewers are always producing fog. Is there like a machine, a fog machine in the sewers? I don't know, because, you know, I've lived in a city before with sewers and sewer manholes, and fog does not always creep out of them. 
it's just like the tiniest bit in certain times of the day. But not, but here it's like there's a smoke machine in every single manhole uh, in Cyberpunk. So hopefully they optimize that or at least give some variants, have some that don't do as much because I've encountered multiple streets where there's like three manholes all producing the same amount of fog. And yeah, it's just weird. Anyway, um, so you can see the fog resolution. I would recommend just low and medium and put up with it for the lighting because they, they should patch that. And with clouds, it's much of the same. There's a bug with clouds where on if you have them turned on, which is basically medium and up, uh, some of the cloud textures look blocky and they look like squares. And it happens more in the desert when you're cloud watching a lot or when you happen to look up at the clouds. So if you're noticing that, the only real fix is, is waiting for them to patch it or turning it off. And you'll get a small FPS boost. It only matters here in this screenshot because I'm staring at the sky and I already have high FPS. And then you can notice it a lot more going up to ultra. But between medium and high, it's only one FPS. And off is noticeable. But when you're actually playing, off and medium, when you're looking not at the sky, the, the performance hit for having it on medium is not the same. It's not like a 5 FPS hit or a 6 FPS hit. It's actually a 1 or 2 FPS difference when you're actually looking at the street. So it's not like a, a fixed performance hit where your clouds are on, you lose 6 FPS or 5 FPS. It's like it's much less when you're not looking at the sky and lots of clouds. And when you do look at the sky and lots of clouds, even if it is a big FPS hit, as it looks like here, it's because your FPS will actually shoot up to a higher number in the first place. So if you were like on 60 FPS playing, you look up the sky, you get 81 FPS with clouds off, and then if you turn them on, you'll you'll like lose FPS, but you're still not down at 60 is when you're looking at the cars, even at ultra. So yeah, when I when I went looked at the cars, I think it was around 65 FPS in this scene when I actually wasn't looking at the sky. So the performance impact may seem big, but it's not that big to run at least medium to have some clouds. But if you notice any blocky clouds and it bugs you, you can just disable it and pretend role play that there's clear skies every day uh, because you're not going to be looking up at the sky that often anyway. And when it rains, you still get an overcast effect. Uh, it doesn't like rain without clouds. You get cloud. You still get like cloudy looking weather. So I should say. So yeah, you still get an overcast effect, and that's that. And finally, I will show one other bug that took me a while. Not took me a while, but took me a while to get around to doing this video. Um, I'll show how Shadow Mesh works real quick. It affects the geometry accuracy of railing and objects when illuminated by artificial light. So the Shadow Mesh and Shadow Quality, not cascaded, but Shadow Mesh and Shadow Quality mostly affect artificial light source. Uh, quality. So mesh on low, you can see that this railing is rounded and it looks square. Mesh on high, it fills it out, looks proper. And the angle, you know, the way the light's hitting it stretches better, more realistic. But for me, uh, medium, I don't have the screenshot of medium, but the FPS hit was around 3 FPS. Um, but again, performance is different on everyone's system. I don't want to say that it'll give you exactly 3 FPS. It's going to be different depending on how high your GPU usage is. And, and how well your CPU is running the game too. So I just want to show you the main difference of what it's doing so you know what, what to look for. Uh, mesh low, if you knock down like a dynamic object that should have a shadow, it is bugged. It doesn't seem to work properly because that should still be giving a thin railing shadow. Uh, medium fixes it, but it still has some artifacting because my quality was also on medium and it wasn't thick enough to fix the artifacting. I don't know, it's like, it's something they might patch, but at the same time, turning the settings up fixes it. And mesh high, it looks good. So here, and here's what I figured out. Uh, mesh medium and quality medium will have artifacting, but if you turn quality up to high, which you might be doing for other reasons, mesh medium looks fine. It looks like mesh high, actually. It looks really close to mesh high with high shadow quality. So this is mesh high with medium shadow quality, and it looks comparable to mesh medium. Yeah, so the settings interact with each other a little bit, so you need to be aware of that. And then I'll show you, that's just a zoomed out one. Mesh low is the worst one. Don't run mesh low if, you, if you're knocking stuff over and looking at shadows with your bike light on. It's really a niche situation, though, because you're not going to see this that much. And when you're driving past railing, you don't get moving shadows like as I expected you would. 
I actually had to hunt for this particular scene. Um, and mesh quality will also affect the accuracy of stuff like bridge railing, uh, the bridge, bridge shadow geometry, whatever you want to call it. It does not have a gap in it. This is the source at the bottom half of the picture. It's what it looks like looking up. When seeing it on the road, there was a gap. And there should be an octagon here, as you can see the octagon, uh, where all the beams connect. And there's none. It's just like a, it's just an X. So yeah, the accuracy basically of the geomet of the architecture of the bridge, the geometry, is not as good on low, but it still doesn't look horrible. Like if you weren't looking up to see what is casting the shadow, this is passable, and you do gain a little bit of FPS running it. Uh, don't pay attention to the bottom part though, because that's FPS when looking up at the sky. It's only the top half that you need to see. Uh, going to medium, it's a one FPS difference, not huge. But it fills the shadow out, so it's more accurate. You still don't get the octagon though at this angle. It's a bit weird. You have to be at a certain angle to get proper geometry, uh, proper like more accurate lighting. And even on high, it wasn't giving me the right shadow. But there is an octagon here, but that's also from this part. When you mouse it over the bottom picture, it's from there. So it's weird that the middle doesn't have it because there's there is an X beam here that could be it. It could be showing this part, but there's no gap that you can see like moving through. And plus it doesn't make sense because then it would work the opposite way when you turn mesh quality off. It would give you the gap, not take it away. So that's that. But then at certain angles, mesh medium also was not enough. So it's enough at this angle to fill it out. But at this angle here, where I turned the bike sideways, the gap reappeared. Um, and it was only filled out on mesh high. So that's what shadow mesh does. It makes bridge and... They... Uh, it's weird because this is daylight as well, which should be affected mostly by cascade shadows. It's not an artificial light, but it also affects bridge shadows. Um, some of the settings are a bit weird like that. Like, you'd think they'd be specific to certain things, and then they still work. I guess the bridge, like, architecture of this kind of design could be counted as an object. But daylight, artificial light, shadow mesh is affecting both. So now that you know how that works, we'll go over to Shadow Poly real quick. Quality is straightforward. Uh, on the lowest setting, characters or you know people lose their shadows, and that's kind of disappointing. So you don't want to run low. Uh, you want to run at least medium or high. Uh, medium, you know, gives them their shadows back, and high gives more, you know, adds detail, makes them sharper. But again, in realism sense. A weaker light can produce a weaker shadow, so if you pretend that the bike light is not super strong, based on the way it's hitting the wall and the way that the, the building is being lit up, this still looks accurate. It's not like an ina inaccurate shadow. It still looks passable. Uh, while high, high looks a lot stronger, but it's like the light beam to the right, like to the edge of the light should actually be weaker, and it makes it look like a super strong light. But you can even see in the picture, like, it's not that strong. It's not a super strong, like, super high beam LED light. It's just like an average light. Um, so in some cases, high might not be a real world. Like, But either way, they're not ray traced. None of them are ray traced. So it's not accurate to begin with, but in terms of what could look real and what couldn't, they both could pass for real looking shadows. Um, because there is a bit of light showing here in the, in the window, in the glass, that you could say is from the bike. I think it was from the bike. So you can see that, but yeah, no shadows at this angle, only low. And the FPS difference at in this specific scene, it's not really a heavy scene. Going from low, uh, I didn't, I captured the screenshot too early because I was trying to get the guy moving, like I was trying to pause and print screen at, at the right time. Um, I did it too quickly and it spiked the FPS, but so that's menu FPS. But low and high is only a two FPS difference, so you can guess that medium might be a one to two FPS difference because it's adding in shadows for the characters. So I would say medium would be at worst 52, like a couple of FPS difference at most. But again, it's going to depend on your hardware. If you're already running a high GPU usage, it's going to be a bigger hit because you'll have less spare resources to push higher settings. And now one thing I, I noticed as well, shadow quality low at this angle with mesh turned off. You know, obviously it's, it looks fine. The mesh was on high quality in this, these screenshots. Um, but one thing I noticed is that at this angle, even on low, people gain their shadows back, 
but they look like dolls, and it looks weird. Like, yes, it's supposed to stretch because of the way the light's hitting them, but low setting is not supposed to... It's meant to turn shadows off for these uh, people, so it's a bug in the game. And the way I figured out it was a bug is you can see medium looks better, high looks even better, but if I kept it on low and then I panned the camera upwards, because these character models, like these uh, computers, aren't meant to have shadows uh, when face like aren't meant to have shadows at all from an artificial light, the shadows would bug and get frozen on the wall once I panned up. So it's just a weird little niche bug I just wanted to share. That was funny. Uh, it's like a Peter Pan type of effect. And they'll eventually just disappear. Like, they'll just pop out of existence. And I could do it on, like, three characters at once. And I'll get three shadows on the wall uh, frozen. So, yeah. Um, I still recommend, I think, medium's a good, a good compromise. Because you don't want to lose shadows in that particular circumstance where you're shining a, a light at nighttime on people. So that's what that does. And then a big one that a lot of people, a lot of websites are recommending wrong is cascaded. They're telling everyone that the cascaded shadow range affects shadow range. That's basically all they're telling you when it doesn't work completely like that. It fills out shadow range. So if there's already a shadow that exists, it'll fill it out kind of like the way mesh quality works. So it's kind of like daylight shadow mesh because it's mainly to do with daytime shadows. It doesn't really affect artificial light at night. Um, unlike, unlike mesh shadow quality, normal shadow, um, shadow mesh, which can affect daytime and nighttime, like on the bridge, um, cascaded range only seems to affect daylight shadows. So, but it doesn't affect the range of all shadows. That's what, what some websites are like putting across. They make it sound like cascaded shadow range controls your shadow range, under daylight in all conditions, and it doesn't. And I'll show you here, you can see these pictures. This is on range low, cascaded. You can see that the the shadow detail or the shadow mesh kind of ends here, but there is shadowing that goes further up. You can see it, it's just not that strong. Um, and then in the bottom picture, this is also on range low. The bridge has its shadows all the way to the end of the bridge, much further away than this, okay? So just so you're aware, the cascaded shadow range is not affecting all shadows. It's only in certain areas. And it more it's more the fullness, kind of like the way shadow mesh quality works. So if we go to medium, you can see that the shadow fills out further up, right? But on the bridge, nothing changes. And then on high, the bug appears, which is a bug that also exists in medium, but you have to be looking at the right angle. But basically, there's a bug with cascaded shadows where you turn it up medium or higher, only low gets rid of it. Um, medium or higher will produce a shadow ring around your character that looks fine in the city, but looks horrible in open spaces. Because the shadow ring will follow your character and move with your character, and you can see it here. There's no, there's no building casting this shadow because it moves with my character. Um, and I think it's a bug because normally you'd expect shadow range high to just extend and fill out shadow further away, not create a ring. Uh, so I think the ring is a bug that they need to patch. Uh, if it worked as intended, I would probably say that the performance difference is minimal. Uh, it, it does have a hit, like you can see here, 57, uh, 59, and then I, I screenshotted this one bad. But in the bottom pictures, as you can see, this was also with the range turned up at the same spot. Low, medium, you can see by the, the, uh, the image names, because I actually saved them, I just didn't label them. Uh, bridge range medium here is 51, and it made no difference on the bridge to have it turned all the way up to high. So it's a very specific particular setting. You, you'll lose a few FPS, but yeah, if it worked as intended, it would extend all the way. But the fact that I still get the full bridge shadow on low m makes me keep it on low, because I don't want to have this ring appear. The ring does appear on medium, just not on this bridge. It's in certain situations, but mostly in the desert, it'll happen everywhere. And on... This bridge, it actually happened when looking off the bridge on medium. And then on, on high, you can actually see it appear here. Because uh, i, I got to do the zoomed in image. So this is uh, low, shadow cascaded range low. And I can see all the way to the end of the bridge. I can see all the shadows. And the geometry is accurate. Like the bridge brackets are meant to have gaps where you can see the light. And then there's bits of concrete that cover it uh, spaced out. So you can see there it's accurate how it should be. On medium, it doesn't have any bug. I can't see the shadow ring yet. 
and then on high the shadow ring appears and covers this part and moves with my character. So if I draw further up, this big shadow here that, that only appears on high range will actually move. And it's supposed to, I don't know, I, I really just think the settings bug because it shouldn't do that. And you can see here how it's filling in the already existing shadows to hit further away. But on high, the shadow ring appears and ruins the ruins the image because there's no building causing it. And now here's a weird one that doesn't make sense uh, to me. Cascaded resolution. I'll show you why it doesn't make sense later. Cascaded resolution low works in a similar way to cascaded up uh, to shadow quality. So if you if you can keep in mind the shadow quality settings that affect the quality here, like how they fill it out and make it just look better and sharper. That's what I expect Cascaded to do, but it doesn't work that way. Um, for some reason, Cascaded Resolution in this particular scene improves the jagged edges. Okay, so this is Cascaded Resolution we're using here. And the jagged edges are smoothed out by being turned off. So you see on Cascaded Resolution High, it looks really smooth and medium's a good balance. And low 51 FPS, medium 50 FPS, high 49 FPS. So there's like a maybe a two FPS difference. But I think medium's a good passable balance setting, depending on your headroom. And then we go to cascaded, because this is also a sun shadow. It's not shadow quality, it's cascaded uh, resolution that affects this. This is the reference of what I was wearing, spiky jacket. On low, my character's legs look blocky and it just kind of looks really scary looking and it's a bit dark. On medium, the legs smooth out, looks about the same. A little bit better, like less blocky around the waist and arms. On medium, it's smoothed out and high is almost the same. Like, I couldn't tell the difference with high and medium on cascaded uh, resolution. Now, I wish they just worded this differently, but anyway. I think they could word these better, but you can see here the difference, cascaded low, medium, and high, and they could have just called them sun shadows, you know, sun shadow resolution, or sun shadow quality, sun quality, sun, sh sun shadow instead of cascaded. Cascaded is just a weird name for it, um, because it's not as straightforward as sun shadows, which is what it's supposed to control the most. Now I'm going to show you the weird thing as well that I was trying to point out, is the way that cascaded resolution here smooths out the edges the way the, in a similar way to sh uh, shadow quality how it works to, to improve quality so it's like a quality setting right and cascaded where is it range is the distance but you can see that this thing is still bumpy if i go to the close-up shots of range uh going from low range to high range the jaggies are still there okay it didn't help with that. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind. Now the setting works differently if it's a distant shadow. So this is distant shadow setting. It's only got low and high. On high, you can see that the aliasing or the you know the jagged edges are much greatly improved, but they're still there. Now you would think based on the bridge on the bridge uh, for sh cascaded resolution. If I can just side by side this. On the bridge for cascaded resolution, you'd think that this is the setting to fix it. Cascaded resolution, right? Because it smooths out jagged edges and shadows in geometry. Shadow uh, shadow architecture, whatever you want to call it, the bridge architecture of static, large static objects. Because it's similar. Like, see this railing? That's the same type of railing that's appearing on the, on the water. Okay? And distant shadows couldn't fix it, right? So if anything's going to work on it, Logically, cascaded resolutions, uh, cascaded resolution quality should fix it. But cascaded resolution quality did nothing because for some reason, the setting that fixes it is cascaded range. Even though the shadow is already in range, it smooths out. It doesn't really fill them out. Maybe it fills them a little bit, but it smooths out the distant shadows and gets rid of the jaggies. So distant, set, distant shadows high, uh, cascaded range low, 
and then cascaded range be medium. But you can see the shadow ring appear that I was talking about, the bug. So the shadow ring that encompasses your character, and it's closer when you have it on medium, it's further away when you have it on, on high but still noticeable, and on low it disappears. Like you can see, I can see the bridge properly. When I turned it off, I, I, I like gained one thing, but then the shadow ring, ring bug appeared. And you can even see I looked under the bridge to try to see how far it went. It went all the way under. So this big blob shouldn't be here. It's like a broken setting. And if it just smoothed out these distant shadows, I would have been happy with how the setting works. But like I said, it appears to be broken. And if I turned it up to high, that's how bad it was. It looks completely ridiculous. And maybe you wouldn't notice it driving on your car. You just think it's a shadow draw distance bug. It's not a shadow draw distance bug. The shadows can be really far away, even on low shadow range. It's a cascaded shadow quality mixed up setting bug, like it's a broken setting. And you can see it here zoomed out. Um, what's this picture? What cascaded range high did to my shadows and medium too. So now you know what it does and you know that it's that causing the shadow draw distance issue. So then the next thing is, if there's anything else I can go over, is I think that was everything. I've covered everything. It's, it's like a one-hour video. If you stuck stuck around this long, thanks for watching. I will just leave you with these at the end, is resolution scaling differences. And I wanted to share these because this is not using DLSS. This is just using Fidelity, uh, the AMD version, Fidelity CAS. And they put this down a lot because they say it doesn't upscale the image using AI in the way that NVIDIA does, but NVIDIA is using the ultra performance mode, which like uses a really low render scale and tries to upscale it, and it doesn't look that good. And then they're just saying, well, it just doesn't look good at low resolutions, but it kind of looks like a normal render scale at 50%. Like it doesn't actually, at least at three, four, ultra wide 3440, um, running a low render scale and just using the basic sharpening with AMD does not look that far off DLSS, uh, DLSS performance modes. So it, it definitely doesn't match DSS, DLSS quality because quality can improve the quality uh, in the quality settings, but DLSS performance and ultra performance can be matched by AMD, in my opinion. And I'll just show you the pictures here. 50%, you can make out words, you can make out lettering. The car gets a bit jagged, but it's not super horrible. 60%, 70%. And you can see the aliasing that does appear, and NVIDIA does handle it a bit better. But their performance modes are not like, like they'll boost FPS, but you can get a similar result from running like at least an 80% render scale, even on a non-DLSS non card. You can actually get a nice performance boost, and I will show the frame rates. Um, but just look at the buildings. If you don't stare at the high quality, like the native image too much, it's passable. Like you can look at this middle one at 80%, it looks fine. It looks good. And you get a good performance boost. Um, and while 90 and 100, well, 90 itself is indistinguishable from 100 for me. Uh, and then 100%, this was just with Fidelity Cast turned on um, just to see if it did anything. And I couldn't really notice the difference. But mainly 90 and 80 is actually where I, I go, well, free FPS, uh, free frames. Because look at the Kiroshi sign, it's not like considerably sharper at native. It looks almost the same. And I had my I had my sharpening setting on the let me see what it was on. It was on sixty percent of these screenshots. And now I'll go to the zoomed in ones so you can have a better look. So where are we? Fifty percent does look pretty bad. Um, but I, I would say it's actually comparable to ultra performance DLSS, uh, to be honest. But you get an FPS boost, that's the main thing. Look, I'm at 100 FPS at ultra wide 3 for 40 by 40 40 with 50% render scale. So yes, it does look blurrier and a little, little bit more jagged, but if you're even considering uh, ultra performance DLSS, which it probably should, um, it's not that far off and you're getting a nice FPS boost. Because stock is like, 50 FPS without any resolution scaling on. Uh, and then we'll go to 60%. A little bit better. Car still looks aliased. Now, this is a big jump. 60 to 70. 
see the aliasing on the car that looks really bad at 60 or 50, it smooths out at 70. And this is actually, for me, this is playable. This is a playable uh, render scale, and I'm at 76 FPS, while at 100%, I'm at 50 FPS. So I'm gaining, like, 20 FPS, and it still looks pretty good. I can make out all the signs, maybe a little, you know, a little, little bit of blurriness added, but at the same time, if you zoom in with the uh, right-click option, you know, you can look closer, it still clears the image up. So if, it's kind of like in real life, if you see like a city from fairly far away, even a little bit of fog in the air or a little bit of smoke uh, from pollution or whatever will slightly haze the, the look of the buildings. That's kind of like what happens in real life until you squint your eyes and look closer. So think of it a little bit like depth of field. So if you're considering have, having depth of field because you like the effect, you could actually run at least, you know, not too low, but DLSS 70 will actually slightly haze the image of the buildings without ruining the quality too much. And it's similar to running depth of field in a way. Like you're getting a slight depth of field effect from running a lower uh, internal render scale because it makes the buildings look slightly lower res, but the effect it has when you're looking at it from far away is it just looks like it's a little bit hazed over It's because they're far away, you know, I'm like I'm on the other side of the river. And that's what happens in real life, unless you've got a really HD 4K camera and you're taking, you know, photographs. Um, in real life, when you look at cities from far away, which I've done, like on a cliff uh, overlooking a city, sometimes you get a similar haze, hazy effect from far away buildings. You can't really see them as clear as if you're standing close. So, you know, 100 does look really good and much sharper. And, you know, you can see it pan off as you go down to 70, but it's really only at 60 and 50 that you get more aliasing in the foreground. But the foreground clears right up at 70, and it just gets better. So even if you don't like 70, you can definitely get, like, with such a minimal difference to visuals, you can definitely get a little bit of an FPS boost, even 6 FPS if it's free, why not? Uh, and at 80%, you can get into playable frame rates. It just depends on what your system is performing at. But I just wanted to show this to people because I've been playing 70 FPS for most of my videos and no one's like, I was expecting if, if someone noticed how low the quality was, how bad it was, I would expect someone to comment and say, why does this look crap? You know, and no one said that. And majority of my Cyberpunk gameplay has been at 70% render scale. And then I kept the FPS. So I've actually got headroom. I can run up 75 FPS plus in certain scenes. But if I cap the FPS to 61, my minimums improve greatly. So that's something I, I'll share in another video if anyone cares about that, because it's kind of hidden in my other videos. I do test it and share it with people, but I didn't make a video dedicated to how, just how much of a difference FPS cap can make. So that's for another vid. But yeah, I just want to share this at the end, just so you guys can see um, the quality difference, like, or the how, how decent it can look at, at a fairly at 30% lower render scale. Uh, this is an ultra wide 3, 440 by 440 though. But yeah, it should work pretty much the same with 4040p. I think 1080p might be a bit too low to turn it, you know, way too far down. Like you can see, definitely see like, see the corrosion sign. It just gets slightly like progressively worse, but it's still pretty lit. Like it's still decent at 70% and then you go to 60 and it starts to look really pixelated and at 50 it's horrible. So yeah, um, that's the end of my video guys. If you really watched the whole thing, I appreciate it and thanks for watching and I hope that answers your questions and thoughts of, about certain, you know, what the settings do in the game. I hope I explained it well enough that you can uh, find your own settings and if there's anything you want me to try to like take a look at, uh, I'm happy to do so. Just Just leave a comment you know, but I'm probably going to just be playing more of the main story and getting into it because I haven't finished the game yet. I've been savoring it and um, waiting for patches. Hopefully they patch some of the stuff soon. But yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.